My name is Karen Bonificino. I am an ordained interfaith minister. Um, and as an ordained interfaith minister, I officiate a lot of funerals and memorial services. Um, I work for Greco Funeral Home in Kennett Square. And so I am an on-staff um, celebrant for services. I am a funeral director's assistant and I am a death educator who organizes um, death education related events at the funeral home and in the community. I have been in the death care field for not very long, actually about three and a half years. Um, my previous career was in horticulture um, up until I was in my mid 40s. And um, in my mid-40s, so about eight years ago, I started to transition my career to the field of death and dying. It was something I had been interested in for a long time. Um, and that is when I started attending um, end-of-life doula trainings. I participated in a seven-month thanatology program. Um, thanatology is the study of death and dying. Um, I went to seminary. So it's it's been a multi-year path that finally brought me to doing this work about three and a half years ago. My name is Susan Greco. I am the business manager at Noggle Funeral Home and Greco Funeral Home. Noggle is in Quakertown, Greco is in Kennett Square, both in Pennsylvania. I've been in the death care industry for about two years now, a little more than that. Uh, my brother is the funeral director at both firms and I joined him about two and a half years ago, so this is relatively new for me. So talking about death and dying, from my perspective, is essential for living life. Um, knowing that death is a part of life, whether we like it or not, um, it is a natural fact that every single one of us will face it and our loved ones, friends and family will also face it. So rather than waiting until we are faced with a crisis, a health crisis, either our own or someone else's, I am a big fan and a big advocate of talking about it ahead of time, thinking about it ahead of time, wrapping your head around it to the extent that you can ahead of time so that once you are faced with that moment, that crisis, that loss, you're more prepared. So a death cafe is a discussion group. It is a discussion group related to topics of death and dying. The beauty of a death cafe is that there is zero agenda. So we do not give the participants any particular topics to discuss when they come to a death cafe. Uh, we, uh, we break people up into small groups of anywhere from three to five per group. We give them maybe some potential conversation starters if they're not sure what they want to talk about. Um, but essentially, we just let them decide what they want to share, what their interests are, what, what their questions are, and people talk. It's a safe space to talk about any and all things related to death and dying. And I was inspired to start a death cafe because most people have a difficult time talking about death and we wanted to create a space where people could come and ask their difficult questions that you can't necessarily ask to maybe your family member or even a close friend just because folks have a hard time talking about it and death cafe is a national organization uh, international actually and they have a platform with safe rules and um, no judgment, no ideology, so it doesn't matter what your race, religion, gender identity, anything. And uh, it, it, what makes it safe is that folks that come to a death cafe are not there to force their opinions or ideas on others. It's just a safe place to share.
It's a really simple, beautiful concept. Um, and the reason I was interested in starting one, again, because I was uh, exploring the field of death and dying as a career, I attended the Death Cafe in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania a few times before COVID. And it was something that was in the back of my mind for many years, like, oh, maybe I'll start a death cafe. Um, and it was when I started working at Greco Funeral Home about seven or eight months ago um, that Matt and Susan Greco, who, who run the business, were excited to give me the opportunity to, to try one from their funeral home. Got our conversation starters here. Though most people don't need them. And this is our death deck that has questions for people who want to pull some questions. And what is a death deck? So it's a game that has multiple uh, choice questions on the back of each card. So if there's a lull in the conversation and um, they want to start with a new topic, somebody in the group can pull a card um, and it says things like, um, well, <laughs> this is a very serious one. You are diagnosed with a serious cancer. You want your doctors to A, lay it all on the line, B, just focus on next steps, or C, talk realistically to my loved ones, stay optimistic. And, and then people can engage with those types of questions, you know, being diagnosed with an illness or, um, you know, what things might you regret um, from your life. Um, how often do you let your loved ones know how you feel? All different kinds of topics. So when we started talking about establishing a death cafe, um, most folks haven't heard of it. it. It started about 10 to 15 years ago overseas. Um, and while there are death cafes all over the country, it's not a common term and we want to change that. Um, but very often when you tell someone, hey, do you want to go to a death cafe? You get the raised eyebrow. People say, what's a death cafe? So my experience so far with death cafes has been extremely positive. Um, people engage in such beautiful ways um, in, these, in, in these death cafe spaces. On any given death cafe evening, um, you, you, the various groups are around the room and, um, and you can hear excited conversation, you can hear laughter. Um, people are really eager to have these conversations um, and grateful that we have given them a space to do so. Um, so my experience so far has been incredibly positive and um, we get people who come back month after month to, um, to participate because the experience is different every month when they end up with different people or new people in their small groups. So it's been really wonderful. We wanted to start Death Cafe to create a safe space for folks to be able to talk about any and all things related to death and dying. Too many people are afraid to have those conversations, and the more we talk about it, the more we can take the fear out of it. Um, I will read our little blurb real quick. You all probably read it at some point, but uh, Death Cafe is a safe and relaxed space to gather with people to discuss topics related to death and dying. The objective is to engage in interesting, thought-provoking, and life-affirming conversations. It's not a counseling or bereavement session, rather an opportunity to increase awareness of death with a view of helping people make the most of their finite lives. Um, so this is not grief support. With that said, we're talking about death. So if tears come up, it's totally okay. We just wanna be clear from the get-go that this is not a grief support group. It's not the intention. So yeah, so just to continue with some of our nuts and bolts of, of how this works this evening, 
We're starting as a big group. Um, we will be then breaking off into groups of probably three to four this evening. I think we'll end up with three groups. The most rewarding aspect of running a death cafe really for me is um, when I see someone who comes in with a lot of fear around the topic um, and or with a lot of questions. Um, very often we get people who come to the death cafes for whom this is a real act of bravery on their part. They admit um, that they are terrified of, of their own dying or the death of someone that they love. And they come to the death cafe to kind of force themselves to confront their fear, which I find so admirable. I would say the success we see is people coming back for more um, and sharing and talking about opening their own death cafes in different towns. And that's the biggest thing that we want to see is that, you know, we've, we've had a, a warm response to our death cafes and when others express an interest of maybe I'd like to start one of these, it's so easy to do. Um, so we always encourage that and the more towns that have their own death cafes, the more people can talk about death and that's what we're looking to see happen. Hi, my name is August. Um, I'm a geriatric occupational therapist, so I work with a lot of people toward the end of their lifespan. And I have been a home health aide and worked for people that have been actively dying. Um, I came tonight because I feel like we don't have a healthy dialogue about death in this country. Um, and I wanted to see what that healthy dialogue would look like if somebody would be good enough to start a death cafe. So I came because the idea fascinates me. Um, I think we need to talk about these things. And um, I'm just thrilled to have been here. It was a great dialogue. I learned a lot. And I was really excited to share the experience with a lot of the people from the town I live in. So. Would you come back again? Oh, I will be back. This is healing for me because I work with people that are dying a lot. So, you know, I kind of need this in my life. <laughs> I, I think every community needs its own death cafe, whether it takes place at a park or a coffee shop or at funeral homes in our case. Um, there's a lot of work to be done around death and dying in our culture and death cafes are a really rich space for people to explore and, um, and learn about this topic for, with one another. So I really hope that, that they will grow and expand and, and pop up everywhere. Um, and in terms of, you know, death and dying in the United States in general, um, again, I really hope that um, because the pendulum has swung so far in the direction of death phobia and fear of death, that, that the pendulum will start to swing. I think it is starting to swing back in the direction of um, more death awareness, more um, death positivity, um, less fear, more participation among families. Um, so yeah, that, that is definitely um, the, the, the paradigm shift that I think would be really wonderful to see. Death is the transition into another realm. Um, for me, death is about letting go of this life and moving on to the next. And obviously none of us really know what that looks like um, or what that is. We think we have some ideas. Um, so just based on my own relationship with um, what I consider uh, a divine being, God, uh, source, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call um, our creator, assuming you believe in one. To me, death is the transition that returns me to my source, my creator. Um, and, and, and to me, death really is a process of letting go. And I think that's 
one of the reasons why it's scary um, in our culture. Um, I think we are such a materialistic culture and we really cling to um, our physical objects and things that we wrap our identity up in. And I think death really threatens um, the ways we identify ourselves in at least uh, modern North American culture. So to the extent that we do not identify with our material world, I, I think maybe that makes death a little bit easier. Having not done it myself, I, I, will, I will find out when it's my turn, but that to me is what death is, a release of this life um, to enter into the next one, whatever that is.